Okay, the section that we focus on in this video is the elementary row operations and what they are used for in matrix algebra. We will learn about the following important ideas, Gaussian reduction, Gauss-Jordan reduction, as well as Kramer's rule for solving systems of equations. Let's see how this works. Okay, so let's see what this um, method is all about. For row reduction form of a matrix, in other words, the Gaussian reduction, we call that a row reduction form of a matrix. Each row consisting entirely of zeros lies below all rows that have non-zero entries. The first non-zero entry in each row is 1. It's called the leading 1. Now we saw that with our previous um, slide where I said let's create those ones on the diagonal. Okay, in any two successive non-zero rows, the leading one in the lower row lies to the right of the leading one in the upper row. Makes sense, because your diagonal has ones on them. If the column of the coefficient matrix contains a leading one, then the other entries in that column will be zeros. Okay, so let's have a look. Let's revisit our previous example and just see exactly what we did. We prepared the augmented matrix like we did over there. Okay, and then eventually we got to that matrix that I have on the screen. Okay, so what was important there? Let's highlight that we had in the coefficient matrix was upper triangular, meaning that all the entries above the main diagonal of the coefficient matrix, which is this matrix, are non-zero. Or all the entries below the matrix is zero. That is an upper triangular form of the coefficient matrix. Okay, what did we do then? We then did our row operations and what did we get? We get diagonal of 1 um, throughout our augmented matrix. So all the entries on this diagonal must be 1. Okay, we used back substitution to find the solution of this set. Very, very nice work that we've done there. Now we're going to step it up a notch. We're going to work with Gauss-Jordan reduction, folks. Now this is very important. You must understand Gaussian reduction first. So practice a few examples before you try and do Gauss-Jordan. Let's see what happens here. With Gauss-Jordan elimination, we do the following. We write the augmented matrix corresponding to the linear system like we did. We interchange the rows, if necessary, to obtain an augmented matrix in which the first entry in the first row is non-zero. The pivot, then we pivot the matrix around this entry. Now what does it mean to pivot? The objective of pivoting is to make an element above or below the leading one into a zero. Okay, the pivot or the pivot element is an element on the left hand side of a matrix that you want the elements above and below to be zero. Then you worked with the pivot or the notion of a pivot. Okay, so if we interchange after that the second row or the row below if necessary. So we work on our operations to obtain an augmented matrix in which the second entry in the second row is non-zero. So the pivot the matrix about, about this entry until you have the second entry is one. You continue until the final matrix is in row reduced form. Now folks, that's an example of what we're going to work with. Remember, what did we see earlier? Earlier, we did not have zeros over here. So this is what Gauss-Jordan Jordan does. The Gauss reduction brings you with zeros at the bottom with other numbers at the top here. The Gauss-Jordan says, now let's get both of them to be zero. Then we can see that x is 9 over 7, 1 or, or y is minus 3 over 14, and z is indeed 1 
over 7. Okay, so that is exactly what it means to have it in a row reduced form. Is you have the identity matrix in the first three columns, or first three rows, and then the constants in column number 4. Okay, so let's revisit our example yet again. That is the form in which we are trying to get our particular system of equations. So we formed the augmented matrix and the process began. We got through Gaussian reduction, we got these three to be zero. Okay, now folks, from there onwards, I'm now looking at making that naught, this naught, and that naught over here. I've taken care of the last row, so a little work to be done. I can choose to make that uh, a naught by just saying the new row 1 is the old row 1 minus twice row 2. I can make this a naught by saying the new row 2, row two is the old row 2 minus 5 thirds of row, row 3. That will create a 5 over 3 minus 5 over 3. And the first suggestion will create a 2 minus 2 over there. Okay, so that's exactly what I suggested we do with row 1. Okay, let's see what we did. We said for the new row 1, we took the old row 1, which is over there, and we minus twice row 2. Now, if you take row 2 here and you multiply it with negative 2, you get that row there. What do I now do? I need to add those two entries. 1 plus naught is still 1 in my new uh, matrix, or my new row 1. But 2 minus 2 is naught, so I've now lost that 2. It's now a 0. If I add those two, I get 9 over 3. Minus 10 over 3 is minus a third. Yeah, I get 33 over 3 minus 26 over 3 gives me the 7 over 3. Okay, so there we go. Now, I'm happy with that. I'm happy there. Happy, 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 happy. I'm going to work on these two entries. That must become a 0 and this must become a 0. Now, folks, for this, remember when you did Gaussian reduction, you used the top rows to, to eliminate numbers in the bottom rows. Now we want to use, for Gauss-Jordan reduction, we want to use the bottom row to create zeros and ones in the top two rows. You don't want to touch this row. Like in Gaussian reduction, we didn't touch the first row. We kept it as it is because we knew we were going to back solve. Here, we are going to use the bottom row to create the zeros. And how, look at how easy this is. A new row 2 will be the old row 2 plus or minus 5 over 3 times row 3. And the same for row 1. A new row 1 will be the old row 1 plus a third times row 3. That takes care of the fractions. Now, if I do that, look at what I've done. My, let me just get rid of those original marks that I had there. I have for the new row 1 there, I have the old row 1, which is there, plus a third of row 3 which I changed over there. Remember, it was 1 and 2. Now, if I add those two there, I get a naught here. And if I add those two, I get 9 over 3, which should result in a 3 over there. And for the second row, let's erase. For the second row, I said, let me use the old row 2, which is that row. There it is. And... I'm going to change row 3 by multiplying it with minus 5 over 3. Now, this is what I said you do on the sideline on a piece of paper, just to make sure you don't make silly mistakes. If I add those two, I create a naught in this position. If I add those two over there, but I'm, no, I'm not adding, I'm subtracting the 2. But I've already multiplied the negative in, so I am going to add those. Then I get 3 over 3, which should leave a 1 in the last position. 
Now let me just get rid of those marks and then we can see how that worked. There we go. We have a beautiful um, one diagonal. We have zero entries at the top, zero entries at the bottom. So we have the identity matrix multiplied by that. So what does that mean? It means X is 3, Y is 1, and Z is 2. Lovely. We got that one right quite quickly. Okay, so it is double the amount of work that you did when you did Gaussian reduction. But what's nice about this is it forms the identity matrix on the left. Now in the next video I'm going to use this idea to solve or to find inverses with. But that is for the video that follows after this one. Okay, so let's reduce the matrix to row equal on form using Gauss-Jordan elimination. What is it that we do? Gaussian elimination helps to put a matrix in row equal in form, while that is what it does. Okay, so that's Gaussian elimination, while Gauss-Jordan puts a matrix in, matrix in reduced row equal on form. So what Gauss does, it puts it in row equal on form. Then Gauss-Jordan takes over and puts it in reduced row equal on form, which looks like that. Okay, so for all systems, it is usually more convenient to do Gauss-Jordan and explicitly solve for each of the variables represented in that matrix system. Okay, let's continue. I'm going putting up that system for you to solve using Gauss-Jordan row reduction. Okay, so pause the video. Do the work and let's see if you got the correct answer. Okay, let's have a look. You started with forming an augmented matrix. There we go. And now we have options. Okay, I'm going to discuss the options because it's necessary to do that. Remember, I want a 1 in this position. So I think the easiest way is to interchange those two and leave that where it is. Let's see. There we go. We interchange. We have a one in that situation over there. And for now, we are happy with that row as we have it. We now have a mission. We must turn these into zeros, that into a one, and this into a zero. So we're doing Gaussian reduction first. How can I do that? Well, for the new row 2, I can say it's the old row 2 minus twice row 3. Or I can say the new row 2 is the old row 2 minus 4 times row 1. For row 3, I can say it's the old row 3 minus a half of row 2. Because that will create a minus 2, so that if I add, I get a naught here. Or I can say for the new row 3, I can multiply row 1 with minus 2 and add it to the old row 3 and that will also create a 0. So I've got choices here. I do exactly that. So I chose to use row 1 in each case and just it's easier to multiply that and then to add. Once we've done that, we get to the matrix that we have with zeros in that place, we're not touching row 1 yet. Now the point is that we want to get rid of these. There's no ways of dividing a common factor. It's not going to simplify, so we're going to be left with fractions. And if we divide by 5, there's no common factor of 5 there. So I think the quickest will be to turn these into 1s and then use our calculators to find out what these differences are of those fractions. You don't want to make a silly error here. Okay, so let's have a look. If I take row 2 and row 3 and I change it so that I have 1s in this position, meaning I must times it with a 6th and times here with a 6th as well. So that brings me to a matrix. I don't want to touch that. I've got the 0, got the 0, got the 1. Now, folks, now this is the only thing that must become 
a naught is that one. And we can see we can accomplish that by just subtracting those two rows. Okay, and then I'm going to start at the same time to change row one. Now remember, if I change row one, I must start using those rows underneath it. So I'm from Gauss Georgian, I work from top to bottom for Gaussian elimination. This is the last step in the Gaussian elimination, and then I'm working from bottom to top. Why am I doing this? Because I want to get that to be a zero. Let's have a look. Having done that, that is what I end up with. I've got a one, a naught, a naught, a naught. I have that one there, and I've just turned this into a zero. These are the two things that changed with those operations over there. Okay, so now the mission is, oh, look at this. Those two entries are equal. Let's take care of them immediately. How am I going to take care of it? I'm going to divide by 70, 17 over 30 each of the entries, or times it with 30 over 17. And I create the ones that I so desperately need. This is now going to make it much easier to take care of those numbers up there. This must become a zero. That must become a zero. That was beautiful. If we didn't see that, we would have gone off on a tangent and maybe add five or six steps here. Now, how? Let, look at how easy this now is. For me to change row one to get a zero there, this needs to become a 4 over 3. So the new row 1 is going to be 4 over 3 times row 3 plus the old row 1. The same for row 2. I can get this into a 0 by turning this into 13 over 6. So I'm going to say the new row 2 is the old row 2 plus 13 over 6 times row 3. Okay, and that then takes care of row 1 and row 2. And look at how beautifully it unfolded. There's my coefficient matrix. It is the identity matrix. So x is 1, y is minus 1, and z is 1. Those are my final answers. Now folks, this was really not an easy matrix. You could have easily done the incorrect, not the incorrect, but a wrong thing. A minus that you miss changes the whole solution. And you've got to start from scratch if you don't get to the correct solution. So work very slowly when you do Gaussian Jordan reduction. It's not worth the time you're going to spend if you have to redo the problem. Okay, so there's another linear system for you to solve. Pause the video do exactly what we did up to now, and then come back and check if you did the right thing. Okay, let's have a look. You formed your augmented matrix, and now you have choices. Okay, so here you said row 1 plus row 2 is going to give you the new row 1. Okay, if you add those two together, then you get a 1 in that position over there. If you add those two, you get a naught. If you add those two, you get a 3. So we were working at getting that 3 into a 1 first of all. Then you could have done quite a few things. I'm going to go through the steps that we have on the screen. I'm not going to explain them to you. You can check them. Eventually, here we are at a point where we have the three the Gaussian reduction is done because we have that the only thing we still need is a one on that diagonal but look at that if we divided the two we had the ones on the diagonal we had the zeros and now we can so that's also another zero now we can start working at making those two zero okay and there you go your answers are x is 3, y is 4, and z is 1. So work very slowly through this process, folks. The notation here is different. Okay, totally different to what we've seen so far. But the process is identical. It's the same.